Welcome, Serana, Hello. who are with us and highlighted. And let me know if you need anything, any screen sharing, but I think that's on you for this point. Okay, and I have 15 minutes, right? 18. Oh, 18, okay. Well, I'll keep it to a minimum so I can answer any questions. Great. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, and yeah, thank you for inviting me and Jack to this to do our presentations on the work that we do with the Grand Canyon Trust. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the confluence and the Little Colorado River Gorge. Um, make sure this works. Is it on screen share? It's not quite yet. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want me to, or are you going to? Go ahead and go ahead and do it. Okay, I will have it up in 15 seconds. Technical difficulties, and we practiced. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess I'll just start out with, um, yeah, like I said, we work for the Grand Canyon Trust, um, Jack and I, I'm the Grand Canyon Program Manager. Um, I've been with the Trust for almost five years. I started out in the volunteer program. Uh, prior to that, I started um, I started at the working with the Save the Confluence families, um, advocating on this issue here and um, getting the word out about, you know, the Escalate development. Um, prior to that, I was working uh, with different nonprofits addressing uh, Peabody coal mine, uh, uranium issues on the reservation. Um, and of course, uh, all of it has to do with uh, culture and highlighting our voice. And I know that um, the superintendent and Jack talked a little bit about um, indigenous perspective and voices. And that's, that's really important because um, when we think about when we think about the canyon, you know we're seeing this great, beautiful place, and and we see we see this vast beauty out there, but we always see it from below, and we never really look at it from um, the view above, and we just don't see how big this place is and what what it all holds and what are the voices behind it, what's what is there, and what's the significance to it, and. Uh, when you look at it from a tribal perspective, you you see it at all different angles. There's there's lots of things too that we are grateful for. Where we have emerged from this place, we've been we have our culture, our stories, our knowledge, our prayers, our plan systems, and there's there's a lot that's in place there. And we we do everything to do to respect it and to to really. Um, be thoughtful and be respectful when we're here, not even just not even here at this level, but even at that um, when you're at the above level and you're you're seeing everything around you. Um, so we, we we are really advocating as much as we can to um, to talk about these issues. Hold on. Can you go to the next one? Yeah. And so when we're talking about the, the Grand Canyon, we're looking at all, all of its tributaries and all the side canyons and you know all, how to get there to Grand Canyon. So we're just looking at a whole perspective. Um, and then of course, when we're thinking about how to protect these places, we're looking at the current threats that are happening. And we, we, try, to, we try to mitigate and solve the problems of how do we ensure that we're protecting these places. And what does that look like? And um, so a lot of, um, go ahead, go to the next one. And so when we're looking at this and looking at it as a whole, we're just, it's not just one area we're protecting, we're protecting the whole canyon. Uh, next one. And so the, in um, let's see, probably about 2012, uh, this development was proposed on the East Rim of the Grand Canyon on Navajo Nation land, but it's also on Grand Canyon National Park boundary. Uh, this development, um, Grand Canyon Escalade, was proposed to have a 420 acres of development on the rim of the canyon, like I said. There was supposed to be a resort there, um, and an IMAX theater, RV park, um, helicopter tours were supposed to happen. And of course, they wanted to respect the significance of the area and the culture of the area, so they wanted to build a cultural center. Um, this place was going to be a really 
it was going to be a, a mini, I guess, a mini Tusi on in South Rim area. Um, what was the highlight of this and their attraction, as they said, was going to be a tram that would take them down to the um, bottom part of the river. You can go to the next slide. And so on this slide here, you would see that the, the cables would run down to uh, the bottom of the river and there would be a platform down at the bottom and they projected about a thousand visitors a day to be going up and down the tram on a daily basis. Um, so the families of the area in the beginning didn't want this proposal. Uh, they weren't happy with it, even with the idea of uh, helicopter tours. Uh, so they had asked for support from nonprofits that were working on the water settlement issue at that time and addressing other issues uh, from Peabody and GS, Uranium. And they even reached out to Grand Canyon Trust to get the word out because like I said, this is within Grand Canyon National Park boundary. And this was an issue that had had to be heard and supported by many. And so within seven long years, go to the next slide. And within this whole epic battle of seven long years of um, Escalade developers trying to get their project through and paying off people and paying off the community, paying off officials and all of that. It just, it was a really nasty battle and I would not have thought I would, me and myself and uh, me, my family, like the families involved and all of that would have thought that, you know, this is just a done deal. And if we say no, it's gonna be over with, but it was a long, long thing of just trying to advocate and drive all over the place and, you know, get our voices out about what was happening here. So in the October 31st, 2017, Escalade was finally voted down in the Navajo Nation Council. And you can see those are like, those are right there are the core families of the people who have been working nonstop tirelessly for seven, eight years on this proposal. Um, and you have the Hopi chairman there and it, you know, it just signifies that um, when there's issues and there's threats and there's that cultural uh, knowledge and there's the cultural sharing and uh, um, that's what brings us together is that culture aspect of everything. And it's not just here with this um, Escalade development and the legislation being voted down, but there's many other things that are happening within Grand Canyon. You have uranium mines that are happening right now and you have abandoned uranium mines that we still have to clean up and you also look at uh, um, developments that are going to happen on Tucson and there's there's just so much things happening that it's it takes a big network of support and it takes a lot of um, understanding and finding that that common um, knowledge and that common a uh, place of what, where, what we understand and that is gonna be nothing but culture and that's gonna be our respect for one another. Um, so, you know, this is this is the one slide I'm gonna stop at on the Escalade development. I know I'm trying to rush here and it doesn't seem like I'm not, it just seems like I'm really rushing. Um, but I can answer any questions on the Escalade development and there's a lot more to be shared. And what I can tell you is that, um, Currently, right now, we haven't stopped um, working with Save the Confluence families. Uh, we still are looking at long-term protections and looking at this place right here as a sacred site designation. So um, in that realm, this at some point in the future, probably by next year, we should have this whole confluence area as a des designation site. Um, I'm not sure how big it's going to be. It could be encompassed of the whole side of that canyon, but you know, it's, it, it is in the works right now and uh, developers are still trying to figure out ways of how to be cultural sensitive and still put up a project wherever that may be. And I understand that there's one in Marble Canyon, but that's not on reservation lands, but that could be a perspective as what um, developers have once told us. Okay, next slide. All right, so, in this slide, um, I'm gonna talk about the three dams that are being proposed on the Little Colorado River. Um, if you see from here, we're, we're looking 
at the whole LCR gorge here. And way in the back, you have the Grand Canyon back there. So this is a, to us, I mean, to you guys, it looks like there's really nothing here. And there's, it looks like a barren desert land, but it, it really isn't. There's a lot of um, grasses, there's a lot of trees, there's, you know, there's trees there and there's a lot of vegetation that's right for our livestock that we have out there. We have families that live out here and you can't, you know, obviously you can't see them, but there's, there's a lot of knowledge of um, homesteads that have been there forever. There's, um, like I said, cultural history from many different tribes in the Southwest. And this is a, it's a really, a, an area that is already protected um, by the Little Colorado River um, Navajo Nation Park. And on the, go ahead, next slide. And when I was talking about the dams, the three dams that were proposed are the Little Colorado River Pump Storage, which was introduced, um, an application for, the, for a feasibility study came about, but that did not happen. And that was, that was a scrap. And then the next, um, feasibility study application that came up was the Salt Trail uh, Canyon Pump Storage, and that was be situated near the Salt Trail, and that pump would be um, located right where that little left line is. Um, and that was voted down, or that was scrapped to that project because the what they found that seemed more better was the Big Canyon Pump Storage, and that would be located right there at the Little Colorado River, Salt Trail Canyon, and the Big Canyon. Uh, so that's the current proposal right now is the Big Canyon pump storage. Um, next slide. And so this uh, pump storage, um, the way you see it is that uh, it's, it would be a, a big massive development and um, it would have a dam on the Big Canyon and it would, they would be pumping water from underground wells and filling that canyon there with the water that they pump out. And, uh, um, and they, would, they would store water up on two, two, three reservoirs up on top. And as, they're, as they would pump uh, water from the top or from the bottom to the top and then pump water back down to the generators, it would generate electricity which there would be uh, transmission lines there and they would pump it out to um, other neighboring states, not, not Arizona or not on the Navajo Nation or anywhere near Northern Arizona, but it would be pumped elsewhere. And uh, this would be a storage bank for electricity. Next one. And so if you look at this slide, it kind of shows an example of what the closed loop pump storage looks like and it's drawing water, going up and coming back down. Um, and so there's, there's, there's different components of this dam and not only would it just pump water, billions of gallons of water from an aquifer, which, you know, this aquifer on a, on a yearly basis pumps billions of gallons of water. And we're looking at Blue Springs and we're looking at the in aquifer and, um, it, it just is not a feasible project. And the water that, whatever water that does flow through the Little Colorado River is not enough to sustain this project here. Um, and so the consequences would be that over pumping would dry out the Blue Springs. We would not even see the Blue Springs no more. We wouldn't see that blue green turquoise water anymore. The in aquifer is already depleted because of Peabody Mine. And so we would have a water shortage already on the Navajo Nation. Um, so, and not only that, from that perspective, you would have, um, it would be, the humpback chub would be endangered. Um, there are endangered plants and there are um, birds that nest there within the LCR. Um, there, and, and overall the many cultural sites would be impacted. And, yeah, this is, um, this is not a great project and we are still in a current process of trying to go up, go up against the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which you can look up online and you can still comment on this um, pump storage project um, 
what, go ahead and go to the next one. Next slide. You have about five minutes. Okay, and so I'm gonna to get to the end of it and you can keep on going slowly to the end. <laughs> and what I'm gonna say about the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is that um, it's an energy, it's an energy, like an energy agency. And it stems out of uh, Department of Interior and they approve all energy projects throughout the Navajo Nation or the, throughout the United States. And um, in that capacity, there's no, it, it, it meet, it's for, it's to meet the, the demands of the cities that are out there. Um, and it, over, it overrides and it oversteps its um, position and on how we meet those energy demands out there. Um, it neglects the sovereignty of um, many tribal nations. You have many people, many tribes out there who are, who have had dams put onto their lands and you've had dams that have destroyed areas. Uh, so this energy commission, um, at this point, we are trying to fight the way that it does, um, that the process of creating energy for others needs to change. Um, and there needs to be more, uh, there needs to be more input and the consensus from tribes and communities that are impacted. Uh, so there is that where we are in this, this whole process the dams is that we're, we're fighting the Energy Commission and we're fighting Department of Interior to make them change this process of not just creating a dam for infrastructure or energy development. Um, and there's other prospects that we're, we're exploring right now in a, in a greater protection role for the LCR. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to go on on both sides of the projects and it's an ongoing ongoing thing for us right now. And I wish I was going on the river trip with you guys so I can talk about it a little bit more. Um, and I wish I had a little bit more time to discuss this in greater depth. But um, yeah, if you want to, on Tuesday, I will be doing another presentation with Sierra Club and that could go more into this depth right here because I have a lot more time. Serana, thanks so much. If you um, wouldn't mind after, you know, we have time for a question or two. Um, if you would like to um, put that information about the Tuesday talk in the chat uh, so we can share it, that would be that would be great. But does anyone have a quick question for Serana? Um, we'll go until about 1042. Either on the chat or raising hands. Right. Well, there was um, some good uh, engagement in the chat. Serana, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Um, we are headed into a break. Um, we encourage you